In this video, I'm going to be focused on something that I personally tend to forget, and I'm sure many other people out there do as well, and that's the art of basing a miniature. It's one of those things that I'm incredibly lazy about, and my previous videos so far have sort of demonstrated that, to be perfectly honest with you. Because you build up the model and you typically slap the model onto the base, you kind of just forget about the base itself, the environment that it's going to be standing in. You shouldn't really do that. You should actually think, you know, what story am I going to tell with this miniature? And it's always worth thinking about this before before you actually start the painting process and indeed even the building process as well. There's lots of basic materials that you can buy online or indeed that you might be able to find laying around in your house or even your back garden. These can be used to set the scene and environment that your characters are stood in. If you're gonna use untested materials, maybe give it a test before actually doing it on a model that you're quite proud of. My own personal pro tip, don't use sugar as a basic material. <laughs> Now, granted, if you are working on a bunch of grunts who are just going to be thrown into the battlefield as cannon fodder, you might not really want to make anything too fancy. You want all their bases to look the same, as if they're in the same environment or same place. And well, for that, texture paints, Citadel texture paints for me, are probably the easiest way to do that. But say, for example, that you've got a miniature that's kind of impressive looking, like a main leader or unit commander, you want to have them looking kind of heroic or boss-like really. Basing a miniature can create an illusion of that because it creates it as a focal point in your army and interestingly enough as well create a sense of scale. Sense of scale if you pardon the pun, is the big one for this video. I'm going to be painting the freebie that I got with White Dwarf many, many years ago. A Mighty Empire tile. These are hexagonal plain pieces of which have basically a bird's eye view of a land formation. You build all these tiles up and you can create basically an environment. I've never played the game, but it kind of incites the ideas of Settlers of Catan. But in the Warhammer games workshop warfare vein effectively i'm going to be using this tile and you know me i'm going to give it its own unique little spin not so much focusing on the painting of the actual miniature that i'm going to put onto it although i will be showing that off sit back relax and join me as we work on this small world that's going to be in our hands so here's our quote-unquote base. I'm going to be thinking a little bit outside the box in terms of this and the subject that we're talking about. But that's part of the joy of basing. You can go as much as inside the box or outside the box as you like. So using this hex tile, there's some cleanup I need to do on it. Notably, the big gaping hole in the centre and fill in those connector slots as I'm not really using this for the game, but just as a display base for the miniature that I've got in mind for it. And then, as always, going to prime in Corax White and it's ready now for painting. To start off I'm going to be using Wild Flesh as this is a dark green. When you're looking at land formation as a bird's eye view, particularly in natural areas, there's darker and lighter areas where grass or fauna has grown. So using the Lycian green, which is a lighter green, I'm going to go into some areas that I haven't painted and again applying this quite patchily as well. Not worrying too much if I do go a little bit over that dark green. I'm now going to use Baylor Brown and focus my attention on some of the fields. I'm not going to paint all the fields here in this colour because if you actually look at a land formation, no two fields look really the same. So I'm going to paint a couple of these in Steel Legion Drab. And then finally I'm going to use Rhinox Hide just to finish off the last two that I need to do. While also using this colour to highlight the roads and dirt tracks. then using the band black for the rim of the base. I then use Mechanica Standard Grey to pick out some mountain ranges, stippling this on just to pick those details out. I'm also using this as a base colour for the village houses. I'm then using white scar, very very sparingly, just on the tops of those mountain ranges, just to give the illusion that they're quite high in the snow form. I'm going to use warpstone glow to stipple into the dark areas of green, this light colour, just to break it down a little more and add some subtle sort of point of interest. I'm 
I'm going to use administratum grey just to dob on to the tops of the roofs of those houses. I'm also adding this a little bit to the mountain ranges as well. Using Uriel Yellow I'm going to touch into some of those fields just to make them lighter to give the impression that they're growing corn. Agrax Surf Shade naturally, pulling that into a lot of the recesses. I'm then using Steel Legion Drab for the rim of the base, and well, I think that's it pretty done. Almost. We've yet to add a miniature onto this small landscape. I picked up these Retro Raygun Mini Robots by Hydra Miniatures from my local Wargaming store. These are cast in white metal and are very retro looking. And so test fitting where one of these, or maybe two of these might stand, I then committed to it. However, I had to cut the bases off first, and then obviously prime and paint. And well, here we have this very sort of War of the Worlds meets Iron Giant miniature. Is he here to save us, or is he here to destroy us? I guess that's down to your imagination. I personally call it a fun experiment, and a job done. <laughs>